Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Jason and Alex back again for that week eight goodness. Alex, how was your weekend, buddy? It was good. Um, my fantasy teams really suck this year, um, but my fantasy analysis, I actually think, has been relatively OK. Um, so, yeah, got to enjoy some time with the daughter, had a holiday party on Friday, drank a little too much um, or you have a lot too much. Uh, Captain and Cokes, uh, we took a shot of tequila before the party even started and I uh, somehow got home. Uh, thank you. Ashley from marketing for dropping me off at home <laughs> and I slept in my suit coat uh, on the couch. So other than that, yeah, weekend was great. How are you, Mr. M- Mr. Meme hey, Machine? Hey, man. This has been this has been great, honestly. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, the Fantasy Football Sackos had their first viral moment. Uh, we, or I guess maybe Pa-pa-pow. I guess I'll take a little smidge of credit. Uh, posted a meme. <laughs> a little. <laughs> oh, you can tell it all, I man. Posted, this is your your I stuff. I posted a meme to Buda Baker's uh, tweet about getting hawked by DK Metcalf. Um, it, Unbelievable play. And uh, I posted a still image because it just turned into the greatest meme of all at the end of last night and through today. And uh, Everybody's just posting things about, you know, the Buddha Baker is in front, was eventually caught by DK. And so everybody's posting memes about, you know, one thing being caught by the other. So the first, for example, the first one I saw was like Sunday being caught by Monday or my plans being caught by 2020. And I was like, I'm, I want to make this not just meme. I want to actually make this like football related. Um, I thought about doing because this, you know, keeping it to that game and the Seahawks did lose. I thought about making it, you know, the Seahawks were caught by the Cardinals or something to that effect because they lost in a last minute heartbreaker in overtime. But what I ended up settling on, because I thought it was much more to the point and honestly more hilarious was over Buda Baker. I put Atlanta. And then over DK, I put fourth quarter because they lost again in the fourth it's quarter. Unbelievable. So the good. Detroit Lions. But then it took off. It has like 4,500 likes and 500 retweets. It was on it was on pro football talk with Mike Florio. It, unbelievable. I like things I never thought would happen. Happened to that tweet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Really cool. I, I will also say that I so. I don't know. I think I was in the shower this morning and I hadn't checked my phone yet. And I was like, man, well, I can't can't wait to like make some sort of joke about DK Metcalf catching that guy. And I wait like <laughs> I checked my phone. I was like, oh, shit, Jason already did that. Holy crap. He really did that uh, <laughs> by, by going viral. And I and I, I woke up to to a picture from somebody. And honestly, my favorite one isn't even Atlanta getting caught by the fourth quarter. It's first place getting caught by the blue turtle shell uh, <laughs> one that you made. Um, that I, was I another actually, one I did. I, I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I, I I actually strongly preferred that one. Uh, it only had two <laughs> likes, but uh, just let, let the record show as a as an avid Mario Kart 64 player. And I would argue I'm one of the best in the world or was at one point. Um, but that one just really, really hit me. Hit I me thought good. it was hilarious. So, yeah, and man, then, really happy for you. Yeah. My yeah, uh, the, the Sackos being on NBC Sports Network is just really cool. Like, unbelievable. Hey, we're here. We got like 100 more Twitter followers out of it and it just craziness. So if you're new to the show, first off, welcome. Uh, we're as entertaining in person welcome. as we are through uh, our Twitter phone keyboards. So debatable if not then maybe we're as funny to look at i don't know um but while you're here go ahead and hit that like button please subscribe ring the bell if you're on youtube please uh and that goes for whatever platform you're listening and or watching on uh we love you guys and thank you guys for all the support it's been a crazy first season 
We're about halfway through. This is the first podcast of the week, which means it is our waiver wire ads of the week show. So with that, let's just dive right in here. Let's start out with some quarterbacks that we like for week eight. Halfway through the season almost. Unbelievable. Um, It's crazy. Let's start with Joe Burrow. He is the only rookie quarterback in NFL history with 400 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown in a single game. He's on pace for more than 4,600 yards, which beats Andrew Luck's record of 4,374. He already has five 300 yard passing games, and he is rostered in less than 50% of leagues. So there's that. <clears throat> the guy's been on it's really fire. incredible. He's been on fire to start a season. Alex, how much fab are you spending to go pick up Joe Burrow? Uh, not much. I mean, if he's still sitting out there in your league, uh, one, I can't believe you don't have him on your team. If you're listening to this, he's got three legit wide receivers, or at least it seems like it. And AJ Green, Jason's boy, T Higgins and, and my board, my boy, Tyler Boyd. Um, so I, I think a couple bucks probably gets him. He's currently quarterback 12 in our league, which is four four points for a passing touchdown. Uh, he's probably a little bit higher than that in six points. Um, yeah, he's he's been really good. He doesn't have an offensive line. Uh, I can't wait to see what he does in year two, uh, if they get him a little bit of offensive line help. But I mean, he's throwing the ball, you know, 40 times a game, essentially, to mostly to these three wide outs that, that he has and he's being effective. So this upcoming week, he's got Tennessee. Yep. Uh, Tennessee's defense has been not so good. Uh, so yeah, I, I would spend a couple of bucks on Joe Burrow, especially if you're in a tight, tight spot with, with buys or whatever's coming up this week for, for your potential roster. So yeah, a couple of bucks. I don't think you need to go more than that. Just a quarterback. I was going to say he has Tennessee, then a buy. And then I believe Pittsburgh after the buy. So, not yep, at pit. Yeah. So then not not the greatest little upcoming schedule other than uh this week, but honestly uh, I would play playoff schedule is home against Dallas, home yep. against Pittsburgh at Houston. So two of the three weeks are are must starts and that matchup against Pittsburgh isn't super scary, I guess. Yeah, Pittsburgh's been a lot better against the run than they have against the pass. So you yeah. could, if you're desperate, start him in all three if you had to. Um, yep. He's he's not going to be your quarterback. Like, if you have Joe Burrow, you have a different quarterback on your roster, most likely, unless you just Probably. had a terrible bus or if it was Dak and you picked up Burrow as the replacement to Dak. Um, I'm fine with picking up Joe Burrow. I think he's a great uh, little pickup. He's been extremely uh, consistent. They have great. You know, they're going to have great uh, game script in every game. They're going to be down and having to throw yep. a ton. Uh, you're seeing the reemergence of AJ Green after being a dud out of the gates, which is just one more weapon f- for him to throw to. I would probably spend like z- between zero and 5% of fab, though. Like he, if he's out yeah. there right now, it means that nobody in your league really wants him or needs him, and you could get him for really cheap, I think. Um. Yeah, I agree. And no, then our no need next to go crazy. What? So the, there's no need to go crazy on him. Um, no. I, I I can't believe he's not rostering over fifty percent of leagues, though. I, I think that's that is asinine. Um, especially with some other people that, um, you know, are bigger names. Uh, like I would drop Ben Roethlisberger for him. Um, if if those are two people that that you're going back and forth on, um. I know Big Ben, you know, has the name. He has just as good as weapons, but uh, the numbers just haven't been there. And if they're going to keep giving goal line carries to Benny Snell and not Man, allow that hurt. to throw, like, like, yeah, you're telling me. I um, like, I, I would, I would drop Ben Roethlisberger to pick up Joe Burrow just because of game script only. I think Ben is a better quarterback. I think he has, you know, very similar weapons, but Burrow is clearly putting up more points. Our next quarterback is Teddy Bridgewater. 
Uh, he has the Falcons at home this week. If you've ever listened to our podcast in the last three weeks, our waiver wire edition, we've, I think, talked about Bridgewater in each one of them uh, since he played the Falcons three weeks ago. Um, he, uh, like I said, he played the Falcons three weeks ago. He just lit them up for 300 yards and two touchdowns, had almost 21 fantasy points. He's rostered in less than a third of leagues. Are you spending any fab on him? I think he's a great bye week filler. I would spend, a, I think, two to five bucks trying to get him just because I think people are going to put zero bids on buys. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Um, if you're looking for a one week replacement, I think Teddy Bridgewater is your guy just because of the Atlanta matchup, especially if Christian McCaffrey comes back. Um, be, that, that, See, that's a tough one because I, I Christian helps him, but that also diminishes his touchdown passing upside, I think, a little bit because they tend to give him the ball more around the goal line. Um, but the Atlanta defense is just so, so terrible. Yes. Um, I cannot believe that Matt Stafford didn't do better against them this week. No. Um, but I mean, t- t- Teddy already proved that he can he can light them up real good. So um yeah, I think this is a dollar bid um, or two dollars, depending on how desperate you are for a bye week uh, replacement this upcoming week. That really does it. I mean, that does it, for, I think, for us, for quarterbacks. I don't really have anybody else. I was going to say my streamer is Teddy. He was my streamer three weeks ago um, uh, against the Falcons. He uh, he lit him up once. This one's at home. I think he's going to easily have 20 points if you're in a pinch for a QB. Uh, Yep. Shall we move on to running backs? Um, there are a couple priority ads because of injury. However, there were priority ads because of injury last week. Not enough people added those guys. <laughs> and they're still more than 50% available. They need to be added everywhere until the injuries are over. And those guys I want to talk about first before we talk about our new injuries. So let's start, if we can, with Boston Scott. Miles Sanders may miss another week before returning from his knee injury. Scott went 12 for 46 on the ground, 3 for 46, and a touchdown through the air, and has the Cowboys this week. Uh, He's only rostered in about 50% of leagues, so he's still out there in half of leagues. Like, and you have the Cowboys this week and no Miles Sanders? like. Boston Scott's going to be a top 15 back in my mind. And I, I think it's going to be hard to talk me out of that. Could be. I, da- the Dallas offense is nobody. Who, some Danucci? Who? What? So. Uh, that's not, that sounds like a pasta or something like that. Oh, and, it's a meal. It's a da- Danucci. Yes. Oh, give me Danucci. Um, and then I take on uh, your Gucci. <sighs> <laughs> oh you guys feel free to turn it off any point it's, this is great but, uh, yeah hey welcome everybody um god we are so weird um yeah i mean there's no reason why boston scott should not be picked up the the fab is ultimately the the question i, I think we did a good job of breaking it down last week where if miles sanders was going to be out there for the year that potentially you go out and spend you, he's limited by a potentially not explosive Eagles offense, although Carson Wentz finally looked like Carson Wentz for the first time yeah, last week against the Giants, especially in the second half. I mean, he he looked really good. Um, at the same time, though, you were sitting there with Boston Scott before it was like a 20 yard touchdown pass to win the game. Um, and he would have only had eight fantasy points. So and I, I, I know that he still had the touchdown catch. I I know all of that, but he didn't. He wasn't doing a whole heck of a lot bef- before that. And they had a they had a rookie. I don't even know what his name was. It was like Huntley or something like that. That that was getting a, a good amount of touches. Um, so yeah, I, Boston Scott should be owned, especially Dallas. It seems like uh, Miles Sanders was coming back after the buy. Uh, so really, this is a one week one week pickup plug. Probably a top, you know, you're you're getting at worst a running back too. Um, so this comes down to how desperate are you? What does your team makeup look like? I think to get him and lock him in, fifteen percent. 
Um, but that's that's high for one week. So you could probably discount it a little bit and, and probably end up in the 10% range, honestly, for me. I mean, it, it really depends on team by team. If you're if you're sitting there staring at five losses, screw fab, man. Like I'm trying hey, I'm trying to buy that's a offensive. W. I'm trying to buy a W. You can't lose again. You can't. If you're at five or six losses, you cannot lose and make the playoffs. So you have to win. So your fab, you might as well already, because we talk about Alex is a much bigger proponent of trying to save fab towards the postseason than I am. I'm all a fan about trying to make the postseason and figure it out then. Um, but I mean, if you have five or six losses, you're basically already in the playoffs. You know, you're in the playoffs to make the playoffs. <laughs> like you, you need to be treating it as a great. You need to be that aggressive on a week in and week out basis. Because if you say, "Well, that's I yeah. can't do it," because well, I, I don't know, then you're going to miss out on him, and he's going to put 15 points up probably in somebody else's bench or in their lineup. And for what? For you to say Fab yep. for playoffs that you don't make? I, but that's. We wrestle with this every year at this time of the year. Um, and yes, Huntley did show up um, and, and affect Boston Scott, but he only had two carries. Uh, Clement only had two carries. Jalen Hurts had two carries. The one thing I'm annoyed about a little bit is Carson Wentz had seven carries for a whopping 14 yards and then managed to snipe a touchdown. So that should have been Boston Scott's. That would have been a nice little six pointer right there. But uh, yeah, I mean, the it's receiving true. yard work, the receiving work for Boston Scott, I think everybody knew was going to be there. So um, I would probably spend if I'm not desperate, I would spend 10 percent. If I'm desperate, I'm spending 20 percent because I need a W. So that like you yeah, should see a true. range in fab bids for all of your leagues. There should be a range in fab bids and the teams that are less desperate are generally should be more conservative than the teams that are really hungry for a win. So, and then our next uh, player we told you to pick up last week is Giovanni Bernard. Mixon was ruled out uh, in week seven. And while Mixon was gone, Giovanni went 13 for 37 on the ground, which is kind of gross. Plus five for 59 and a score <laughs> through the air. Uh, he has the Titans in week eight, as we mentioned when we talked about Burrow. He's rostered in only 49% of leagues. So again, about half the league, half of all leagues, excuse me. Um, how much would you spend to go out and add Geo if uh, Mixon were to miss another week? Yeah, and it seems like Mixon will be missing another week, especially with the buy on the other side. Uh, very similar to Miles Sanders' injury situation, where they're, you know, both taking another week off, probably get the buy, come back for the stretch run. Right. Um. I so I here's my question: Who do you prefer this week? Do you prefer Geo against Tennessee, or do you prefer Boston Scott um, in their matchup against Dallas? I would pick Boston Scott going up against Dallas. I think Dallas is terrible. I don't know if they'll win another game. Yeah, but it, I, I think it's relatively close, though. Um, so, you know, if, if you're discounting, you know, two or three percent on what you just said for Boston Scott, then I think that's fair if you like Boston Scott more. Um, Geo's been you know, probably a better, more consistent wide receiver in that offense um, than Boston Scott has. So I I just think that Burrow is going to be more familiar with Geo than Wentz is going to be with Boston Scott. And so that's why I would actually prefer Geo in the matchup against Tennessee. We saw what, uh, what James Conner did to them. He should have had two receiving touchdowns out of the backfield. Uh, on a very similar play that Giovanni Bernard scored on uh, this week, which was just a little quick out route out of the backfield that he scored the touchdown and, and Connor scored and got one call back for holding and then dropped another touchdown. That was literally the exact same play <sighs> um, that Bernard scored on. So if you're like for that reason, I I think the bid is probably the exact same for Giovanni Bernard as it is for Boston Scott. I would agree. Uh, 10 to 20% based on how desperate you are for a W is pretty much about how much 
I would put down on Geo. Uh, and then uh, I think that that's going to do it for old injuries at running back. Let's talk about some new ones. First up, Carlos Hyde Yay. is probably the ad of the week. Um, Chris Carson injured his foot. He has a mid foot sprain considered week to week. Uh, quote said he will miss some time. Uh, Carlos Hyde went 15 for 68 and one score on the ground. Plus, he also had three catches for eight yards through the air. He's only rostered in 5% of leagues. Woof. He's not he's not great, but the offense is. How much fab are you spend or how much fab are you spending? Not spending, sp- spending. How much fab spending? How much fab are you going to spend? Let's let's do some spending on Danucci. Um, <laughs> how much fab are you going to spend uh, on Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> um so I I read something earlier that uh like I don't know I Chris Carson is just notorious for playing through injuries, apparently, and that they said that he's going to try to give it a go, um, which really th- kind of throws a wrench into this, because um, if he wasn't going to play, uh, I I talked last Thursday about Seattle just doesn't run the ball that much. Um, and I will also be on it, like, or especially this year, historically, obviously they have, but they were talking a lot on the Sunday night game about how Seattle's passing at the the highest percentage of passes on first and second down, which is completely the opposite of what they've been historically. Um, To me, Carlos Hyde looked better than Chris Carson did when Chris Carson or when Carlos Hyde was getting the ball Sunday night. Take that for whatever that means. Um, This is tough. I, I don't think you're spending more than. Well. I mean, it, it, it depends if it comes out that Chris Carson's going to be out by the time that you're listening to this tomorrow afternoon or something like that. If Chris Carson's going to be out for three to four weeks, then I would spend like 25 percent of fab. If he's going to try to play on Sunday, then I would spend like 10. OK, so that I'm going to add a wrinkle to your wrinkle. We got wrinkles on wrinkles. Okay. Uh wrinkles the 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 latest thing i've seen from the deep twitter web which is where everybody all <gasps> of the astute fantasy analysts get all of their news from is the True. potential reactivation of, of uh rashad penny no i was waiting for it and whether or not that happens is it possible it's murky at best if it happened they're t- I mean, they're talking about rushing him back. Evidently, he's ahead of recovery, but he's like hasn't been activated yet. We got the coach speak of all coach speakers, professional. I like Pete Carroll when he was in college must have dated like five women at the same time because the way that he talks to the media. <laughs> God. You got to think he learned how to sweet talk and he's just been schmoozing his way through life because that's what he does like oh no yeah it's 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 like he is he is one of the one of those five girlfriends should have told him to run the ball with marshawn lynch against the patriots at the one yard line a couple years well he's probably a little stubborn maybe doesn't listen but like Mm. chris carson's ankle like his foot could have been dangling by tendons and and just hanging there (laughs) And Pete Carroll would say, yeah, I don't know. He's day to day. He could he could play next week. Maybe I mean, you just you don't know. He looks great. <laughs> like like, you know, what it, it reminds me of Monty Python when they're cutting each other's arms off. And it's like, oh, tis but a flesh wound. Tis but a scratch. That's what <laughs> Pete Carroll is like. Everybody's always about to play. Nobody's hurt. It's great. It's very sunshine rainbows. And terrible for analysts. <laughs> So what the hell are you saying? I'm saying that part of me thinks that there's a very outside shot that Carson plays. I would I would be shocked if he played, but not surprised because the guy plays through injury after injury and is notorious for it. I really don't think Penny has a chance. There's just no way. And so that leaves no. you with Hyde, but I don't want him. 
because I don't think Carlos Hyde is very good at football. If I'm being completely honest, um, yeah. he's a fine backup. <sighs> he had a thousand yards last year. I think more of the issue is he's facing San Francisco this week. That's that's probably more of the immediate concern. Than and they look good. Is your, they look very good. Yeah. I, I still will never understand how they got demolished by Miami um, earlier in the season. But I mean, otherwise, they've looked really well. Yeah. So you, I, you don't um, want to start him even if you get him. So no, I would. It's I'm, I'm not going to. I just have already accepted the fact I'm just not going to get Carlos Hyde. And you know what? That's fine. I don't care because he's not going to do well for anybody that gets him. I will be shocked if he gets into the end zone. I think that he probably goes for like fab wise. I bet he goes for 20 to 30 percent fab. And I agree. I won't bid more than 10 percent on him because I don't really want him if I'm being honest. And I think Carson comes back sooner than later. And with Rashad Penny hanging out there, you know, probably coming back in a week or two, then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You're, you're not getting long-term value on Hyde. That's why I threw out the 25% if, if Carson's going to be out for a while and you're desperate. Otherwise, you end up in the 10% range for a guy that's a one-week one week fill in against one of the better defenses in football. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tough one. Good, good, good luck. If you have to make that decision. Um, I, I personally don't want him and it doesn't sound like Jason does really either. I would also say that they're just throwing the ball so much that, you know, Chris Carson has been a fine running back because of touchdown production. Eventually that touchdown production is going to dry up. And it's all going to go to their wide receivers um, just because of how much they're throwing and the opportunities aren't there. Why would Carlos Hyde get more opportunities than Chris Carson was already, which wasn't much. So, yeah, for that reason, um, 10 percent. But somebody's probably going to outbid you. Oh, yeah. All right. And this is where we kind of took a nosedive at running back. You get away from the obvious to a little bit, I think, a little more obscure. Uh, let's start with yep. LaMichael P. Ryan. He outsnapped Frank Gore 40 to 16. He was in on 70% of snaps. I I saw more snaps than Frank Gore coming. I did not see a 70% share, though. Uh, he put up mm -hmm. uh, an 11 for 39 and 1 line on the ground. And he also had two catches for 16 yards through the air. Um, his next three games are at Kansas City, New England, and a bye, which is terrible, worse, and awful. Uh, so he's not uh, <laughs> like he doesn't, his schedule doesn't excite me at all. If he was playing the Jets instead of like being their running back, I would get a little more excited, but he's not. Uh, he's rostered in about 11% of leagues. Are you spending any fab on LaMichael P. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, why not? Starting um, running back, you have to. He seems... Right, exactly. That's what I was going to say. I have Frank Gore, um, or had Frank Gore on a roster leading up to last week. I had to drop him for for roster construction reasons. Um, but yeah, I, I think he should absolutely be be rostered. I was uh, um, ma making the joke. We in, in my family, we play an old wrestling video game called WCW versus NWO World Tour. It was made in like 1996. And uh, Hulk Hogan has a move we called the power line um, or shortened to P line. Um, and so I, we made the joke in our family that Hey, uh, it kind of sounds like Cartman trying to say P line because uh, his name is P Ryan. Ah, P Ryan. Ah. Uh, sorry, nobody's gonna get that joke. This I was apologize. so uh, that took um, so long to get there. <laughs> ah. Hit him! Hit him with the P line. Um, yeah, he he of all the running backs that we've talked to, uh, or that we've talked about today probably has the best season long value um, to, to have on your roster, especially if he's going to continue to play that much. Um, and his fantasy football matchups at Seattle at LA Rams and home against Cleveland. Um, Who? He's not going to do much against. 
Uh, yeah, well, Michael Pirine. Did I say that wrong? They're, they're home against Cleveland week 16. Oh, for playoffs. I was like, those are not the next three. I thought I was talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm with you now. No, no, I'm no, I'm I'm playoffs. So at Seattle, at Rams, home against Cleveland. If he's still there, um, those are f- okay matchups from a from a points based perspective. But yeah, I think he has the most season long value of anybody we've talked about. If they're they suck anyway, they might as well give it to a rookie uh, instead of the eight hundred year old Frankie Gore. So if he's available and he's going to be playing that much. He might still be flying under enough people's radar that you could probably get him for 5%. Um, so that's probably about where I land um, because theoretically they might have picked him up last week. Um, so that's probably where I am. I don't think you'll need to spend more to get him. I agree. All right, let's move on, shall we? Our next running back up is Tevin Coleman. Uh, Mike Shan- <laughs> Shanahan is optimistic that he will return from IR this week. Most hurt hurt. Most hurt is hurt. Uh, Jeff Wilson came in, blew up, and then got hurt and is out for a while. <laughs> so you have Tevin Coleman, who's rostered in 20% of leagues. Somehow, some way, I don't really know why he's even rostered in that many, given <laughs> the, his season. Um, how much fab are you spending on Tevin, given his return and the state of the running backs and all of the uh, the plethora of injuries that they're facing? Uh, I think you should spend a zero dollar bid on him because I think you can get him for that um, or one dollar because he might not be on people's radars um, or they might not be paying attention to the Shanahan again. Side note, Jason got um, basically a offensive comment uh, ban on Twitter for saying Shanahan again. So we might have to start beeping it out on our pod. So if you (laughs) you notice that we... Um, so yeah, I, I think he's worth a zero or one dollar bid. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen there. And Michael Hasty could could end up being the guy there this week. We don't know. Um, so Coleman's owned in nineteen point six of leagues. Jamichael Hasty's owned in three point five. We don't know what's going to happen. Hasty was the guy after uh, injuries occurred, and it seems like everybody gets hurt for the Forty ers and. So I would not spend a ton of fab on anybody because they're going to go off for one week and then get hurt and go on the IR. Like they've basically had a rotate, like they put a new running back on IR every single week this year. They must love the revamped IR rules for this season because man, Oh yeah. I don't know if anybody's taking as much advantage of them as, uh, as the San Francisco 49ers are. Uh, as far as what I would bid on Coleman, it's a zero to five bid. I'd probably spend a dollar, maybe two to just try and beat whoever else might try to make a little s- sneaky stash after, uh, cause I know yep. there's, you know, it's up on Roto that Shanahan said that he should come back this week. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's get some, you know, sneaky low bids on him. I would never go anything more than like seven though, if you're really desperate. Um, and then our last yeah, and, and, running I mean, back. Jamichael Jim, Hasties did have nine carries for 57 yards and a catch last week. He had nine carries the week before. So just, I'm not saying he's going to be better than Tevin Coleman, but they clearly like him at least a little bit. Um, so don't be, you know, he's, poten- he's, you know, currently only rostered 3.5% of leagues. I'm just saying that he might be the guy this week um, in front of Coleman. We, we don't know that. I'm basing that on nothing. I don't think Shanahan's basing it on anything either. So um, just don't be surprised if he's playable this week. Yeah, I've almost thought about bringing up Hasty a few times on this, but it's like, I think his week to week role yeah. is so, I don't know, up in the air. It's like, it's not defined. Yeah. And I just wish that, you know, anybody would have said that uh, McKinnon was for whatever reason going to be conserved, you know, this week, and they they weren't they were trying to limit his touches for what because he had been semi, you know, something of a workhorse the last couple weeks before. Um, man, you, that just says that says the, a the lot. Two about weeks before what, that, he had he had three touches and eight touches, and this week they limited him to three, or they just don't like him that much and they like the other options yeah. better it's crazy it'll be interesting to see how much or what kind of role coleman does have when he comes back um 
But yep. let's move on, shall we? Our last running back is Wayne Gallman. Devonta Freeman left in the third quarter with an ankle injury. Question, he was questionable return, but did not manage to return. Uh, they play Monday night against the Bucks, which is really gross. Uh, Wayne Gallman rostered in less than 1% of leagues. I am putting a zero bid on him, and I'm probably not playing him because it's the Bucks. I agree. Okay, that's fine. We can leave it there for Wayne. I, I I do I do have one other running back that I'd like to b- pick up or just mention. Um this is a this might be a shocker special for you, but I have to say Naheem Hines um has done a whole lot of nothing the last three weeks. And Jason, you bid seventy five dollars on him week one in our league. Um would you consider picking up Naheem Hines again? Well, you saw what he looked like in the first game. <laughs> and then, which was like Austin Eakler 2.0. Um, and then uh, he had zero rushing attempts the next game, followed by 7, 9, 3, and 0 against Cincinnati. He was on bye during week 7. I don't know why you're trolling me about Naheem Hines. It was a terrible... <laughs> It was a terrible job on my part. I was duped. I was, I was trade swoggled as was uh, a new word that we're inventing in the fantasy community. Um, I was bushwhacked. I was taken advantage of (laughs) by Naheem Hines. I blew 75 Fab dollars, or I think it might have even been more than that. If I'm being honest here, hold on. No, it was seven. It was seventy five. I looked up. I looked it up just to make sure that I I trolled you correctly. Thanks. So let's see. Seventy five divided by two hundred. I dropped thirty seven and a half percent fab on him after week one because I was convinced he was going to be Austin Eckler two point oh. Instead, he was Boston Jeckler. And he is Austin Eckler's distant cousin who is smaller and more worthless. So thanks, Alex. He's thanks. only owned in 30. He's only owned in 36.1% of leagues. That's 36% um, so looking for a bad more running back. than he should be owned in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't resist. Uh, Lord. He fit the profile being under 50%. So just wanted to. Just wanted to bring that up with you. Thanks. Moving on. Wide receivers. Uh, (laughs) God, ruthless. Uh, Wide receiver ads of the week. Let's start off with uh, Sterling Shepard. He uh, had six receptions for 59 yards and a score on eight targets. Eight targets in his week seven return against the Philadelphia Eagles. He's rostered in 36% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Sterling Shepard if he's out there? Hey, you should have picked him up last week after, um, you know, I mentioned him after. Uh, I, I just want to I can take a bow on this one, right? Is that We're allowed? Waiting. Yeah, he. Uh, to take a bow or for a fab number? No, um, for, I meant I, for a bow. I did not. I did not mean for a fab number. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. You look like you've done that before. Yeah, now my luscious locks are all messed up from banging my head on the table. Um, I uh this this is a tough one. Um so Darius Slayton was covered by Darius Slay. Mm. And so that kind that kind of had Sterling Shepard open. Um or Daniel Jones was at least focusing more on Sterling Shepard because Damn, he Daniel. had the second best corner. Much of m- more so, you know, not obviously not to the same um, impact that you saw last night with DK Metcalf being shadowed by the number one and Tyler Lockett just going bananas, but somewhat similar. Um, so he, we talked before the season. We think he's really good. He's never been able to stay healthy. So Check. how many weeks do you think you're going to 
how many weeks do you think you're going to get out of Sterling Shepard, who continues to show that he cannot stay healthy? When he is healthy, I think he has wide receiver two value um, or potentially wide receiver two value um, or wide receiver two talent, maybe not value. I um, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I don't know. He, he had six targets week one, four targets when he got hurt against Chicago week two. Had eight targets last week. I um, you're probably somewhere in the fifteen to twenty percent range. Um, maybe maybe twenty if you're more desperate. Uh, maybe you know we're back down to ten again if you're not quite so desperate. Um, yeah, that, I think that's I think that's where I fall in. And you just have to hope that he stays healthy. Uh, playoff matchup is against Arizona, which we just saw. If they're going to do the same thing with Patrick Peterson and and Fitzpat, uh, yeah, Fitzpatrick, if they're going to put Patrick Peterson on on Darius Slayton, then that opens up Sterling Shepard week 14 against Arizona. Cleveland is a fine matchup. We just saw what Burrow did and week 16 is a little rough at Baltimore. Um, but yeah, he should have he should have value as long as he can stay healthy. So let's say 15 to 20. I completely agree. I think it's also worth mentioning that the two weeks before the playoffs, he has at Cincinnati and at Seattle. So he could help you make that late Mm -hmm. season push to make the playoffs um, in those two prime matchups. Uh, I like Sterling Shepard a lot. I would like him more if he stayed healthy, which he does not do. Um, Hopefully he stays healthy for the rest of the season. If he does. I think from here on out, he's obviously like top 36 or better. I don't, I feel like that's not being very aggressive. Um, no, I, I agree. And also uh, we like I mentioned their defense last week about their defense not being terrible. Carson Wentz got a ton of yards on them, but they're somewhat stingy um, or, you know, a good defense when it comes to just like getting sacks. And so the, they, their defense will keep them in games. Um, so they should be playing tight tighter games um and so don't don't be surprised especially if they don't have any running backs with devonta freeman getting hurt Wayne gallman is meh obviously barkley's gone um so yeah i mean they should keep slinging the ball uh and if that's going to be the case then sterling shepherd's more than playable i agree all right let's move on yeah i'm with you on the 20 20 percent range if you're desperate on shepherd let's move on shall we um, probably not second on most people's lists, but I actually like him to have a sneaky, great second half of the season. And that is Jalen Rager. Uh, he is designated for a return. He was designated today, Monday, uh, which, you know, opens that 21 day window to be reactivated. Deshaun is, I think, gone or done, at least for a while. Uh, there's no Goddard yet either. No Ertz. I think that he's going to immediately present himself as a very capable passing option for Carson Wentz. Uh, He's rostered in less than 10% of leagues. Uh, I think he all, all of the love that Travis Fulgham has been getting everywhere for the last two weeks. I'm like, just wait, just wait till Rager comes back. And then just, just, I'm just envisioning all of the articles about, Jalen Rager winning people fantasy leagues. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he's able to do over the second half of the season. Um, how much fab would you spend on Rager? I think you can get him for zero. So I think you should Ooh. get it. Like the, the, uh, the, the hard thing is, is that he was designated for return. I, I know we talked on this pod a couple of weeks ago. And after I brought up Jalen Rager's name, you went and picked him up and stashed him on your IR slot. So you're welcome in our Thanks. leagues. Um, I, uh, yeah, fact, factual. Um, I love it. Um, so I, I, I think you could probably get him for a zero bid. It just depends on how much people are paying attention in your league. If you're in a very competitive league where people are paying attention, uh, you might have to go 5% to get him and he might be worth that. Yeah. The only thing I would say is like, I don't know if necessarily enough attention is being pointed to people that are on IR by the fantasy analyst community because we have a season yeah. we have a season where there are more IR slots in more leagues than there have potentially ever been before and everybody just talks about like who blew up the week before for waivers and not injuries that are going away so like 
Sterling yep. Shepard and Rager, we talked about his ads last week. You know, like you could have already had him on your roster and people are playing with like three to five. I've seen obscene numbers of IR slots and extra bench slots. Like if I have eight or nine bench slots, I'm going to put a couple IR guys in those. I don't need a bunch of like bottom feeder, yep. you know, guys like I had a B in a couple leagues just because I had like eight bench spots. Like, what am I going to do with that? Nothing. Well, might right. as well put on a B in case he gets signed somewhere. What do you know? It hit. So that's something like we, you know, Jalen Rager could be one of those guys. I'm not saying he will hit. Obviously nobody really knows. Um, but given the state of that offense, he makes a great ad. Um, I would probably spend a couple bucks on him in fab. I think you could probably get him for free. Oh, everybody's going crazy over yeah. Travis Fulgham. So, yeah, right. I, Fulgham looks great, and and you know to to add Rager's name, uh, same thing goes for Dallas Goddard. Same thing goes for Alan Lazard. If they're sitting out there, yes, they're on IR. But if you have extra bench spots, I mean, Goddard could win people titles at the end of this year um, w- when he comes back. So if he's sitting out there on your on your waiver wire, go pick him up and just stash him. Absolutely. All right. And then one of the guys that's kind of consistent from year to year, never really gets a whole lot of love. Uh, Next up, we have Cole Beasley. He's currently wide receiver 21, rostered in more than 40% of leagues. Um, His low low is like eight points per week. Well, this is half PPR. Excuse me, half PPR. And his high is like, he's a high floor, high ceiling guy. His low is about eight points and his high is, was just over 16 this last week. Um, he, he has three games in single digits and half PPR scoring. One was like nine and a half though. So it's right at double digits. And then against the yep. Jets in week seven, he had 11 catches for 112 yards. His next three games are uh, at home against New England, at home against Seattle, and then at Arizona, which two out of three are great. You know, he's he's not going to be getting the number one cornerback attention. That's all going to go to Diggs. And uh, so I'm Cole Beasley's the check down guy for Josh Allen uh, rostered in just over 40 percent of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Cole Beasley if you're looking for somebody to have a high floor? Yeah, one of our good mutual friends, Brian Bell, asked me, uh, who would I start this week, Cole Beasley or Keelan Cole? Um, and I said, well, Keelan Cole's been very, uh, very consistent. And um, that was wrong. That was very wrong. Um, he didn't ask Cole, me. I would have said Cole Beasley. Beasley ha- well, there you go. That's What's the, the difference Jason? between um, four and three and one and five, baby. Uh, one in six, although um, I am only down six right now with uh, three really? minutes left in the in the Monday. Yeah, I came coming back to be one in six. So you have to get a little close just to it's it's like being a Cubs fan again, where the Cubs would always put the tying run on like second or third base with one out and never score the tying run. Um, so, yeah, C- Cole Beasley ha- has been really great. Um and I guess I wasn't really paying attention to how good of a season he's having. And apparently nobody else is either. If he's only rostered in 42% of leagues being wide receiver 21, I know having a massive week helps with 11 catches for 112 on 12 targets. Um, he just isn't scoring touchdowns. No. Um, but yeah, you know, I like, and that's the hardest thing to predict is, is he going to score touchdowns? Diggs has been the touchdown guy. And when they get close, it's going to be Josh Allen rushing it in. Um, sorry for those people that played Devin Singletary last week. The The Bills are starting to play good defenses now. Um, a lot of the way in here. Um, and so will Cole Beasley be OK? Yeah, probably. Um, I think he's a five five percent guy. Um, one thing that I, I would just randomly say about the Bills is because they're playing these better defenses. Um, or they're going to start be playing these better defenses. Maybe look at their kicker because they're going to move the ball. Josh Allen's still going to move the ball at least a little bit. Um, and their their kicker's name's Tyler Bass. Um, he would he's potentially an ad if they're going to 
starts stalling in the red zone, but they're still going to be able to move the ball. They just might not be scoring touchdowns. So 5% on Cole Beasley and potentially take a look at Tyler Bass. <clears throat> Pitching kickers, are we? Hmm. Um, let's move There's on. There's more coming, baby. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Moving on, shall we? Our next receiver is Brandon Ayuk. We had Debo Samuel go out with a hamstring injury. Looks like he's going to be out, I think, probably through their bye. Um, ugh, I'm so upset about it. Ayuk had six <laughs> catches for 115 yards on seven targets against New England while Debo was out. His next three games, and this is why I'm so freaking upset about it, at Seattle, Green Bay, New Orleans. Like, that. I, that's, that, that's very delicious. It's really great. Yeah. Um, granted, I'm not thrilled about Jair shut down corner, potentially Jair Island in, in you know, against Green Bay in, in, next week, but uh, he would have been on Debo anyways. It'll be interesting to see if he covers Ayuk or if he covers Kittle. I don't know if a corner is going to be able to do much to Kittle, but hey, neither here nor there. Um, while Debo is out, I think Ayuk is top 30, top, you know, like floor and, and potentially better. Mm -hmm. Six for 115 on seven targets. Yep. Jimmy G looks healthy. That offense is moving. You get Kevin, you get Tevin Coleman back. You got Kittle there. They run design plays for Ayuk, you know, to get the ball in the backfield and get him the ball in space and those things. I think I'm probably spending fab wise like 10%, 5-10% just because I think it's only like a a three week rental and I think Debo probably comes back after their buy in late November. I, I think you if if he's not already rostered in one of your leagues, I think you can probably get it for zero. So you should bid zero um, on him, in my opinion. Um, only 20% of, of leagues is super low. Um, currently wide receiver 36. Um, I think he'll be better than that. Uh, they ran a ton of end arounds to Debo Samuel and him and Ayuk are very similar. Um, and so I would not just be surprised to see them just drop Debo into, or sorry, drop Ayuk into Debo's role um, with having more end arounds, having more rushing yards. Um, so I think you can get him for a zero bid, and I would not be surprised to see him break a long end around touchdown this weekend. Yeah, if they didn't have different numbers, I would swear they were the same person. They have like the same. They're very in, similar. Incredible yeah. stature. Um, all right, let's move on, shall we? Uh, we're going to start getting into some stretches here. We have next up, we have Richard Higgins. So Odell is now out for the season with a torn ACL and Higgins in his place went six for 110 on six targets. He's rostered in 0.2% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Richard Higgins? If any, is it a one-time wonder? Are we more focused on Jarvis Landry and the potential return of Austin Hooper or what are we doing? It's a good question. I mean, he had a touchdown in the two weeks before this week when he kind of exploded after OBJ got hurt. So it's not like he wasn't being used. He was clearly their wide receiver number three. Um, it looks like he's clearly going to be their wide receiver two going forward. Um, six catches, 110, as you already mentioned, on all six targets were caught. Um, he's probably a dollar or two bid. Um, Baker's looked pretty good. Um, and if he's going to be active, then yeah, why not? Um, Playoff matchup, home against Baltimore at Giants and then at the Jets. Um, so it's just OK. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's worth a dollar. Um, I wouldn't do more than that. Next up, we have Marquez Calloway. Emmanuel Sanders is on the COVID-19 list. Michael Thomas still has an injury, this time hamstring. Uh, he's an undrafted free agent out of Tennessee. He had eight catches for 75 yards while everybody was out last week. Trey Quan Smith had <laughs> four catches for 54 yards on only four targets. Um, Callaway is rostered in 0.1% of leagues. Trey Quan is rostered in about 23. Are you spending fab on either of these guys? Are you spending fab on Callaway? How much are you spending on them? 
No, zero. If you're going to go out and get him, it's zero. Um, he, I mean, Michael Thomas is going to come back at some point unless they trade him, apparently. Um, so, yeah, if if you want to add him, it's zero. Uh, keep in mind, they're at Chicago next weekend, which we've talked about how good their defense is against the pass. Um, so I would, I probably wouldn't even go pick him up. But if you're going to um, zero your way to get him. I agree. And then next we have our tight end ad of the week, Richard Rogers. No Ertz, no Goddard for now. Wentz went, uh, or he went, Richard Rogers went six for 85 on eight targets. So Wentz just still hammering the tight end position. Six for 85 against the Giants. Mm-hmm. They have Dallas at home this week. He's rostered in 4% of leagues. I am firing up Richard Rogers if I am desperate. Yeah, if you're desperate, um, uh, this is a dollar ad, maybe, um, only because it's going to be a two-week wonder uh, until, or no, probably one week, because Goddard will come back after the bye, just like Miles Sanders. So um, if you're really desperate and need somebody for this week, it's probably a buck. Um, I personally would prefer Logan Thomas, um, who is available um you know in basically 92 percent of leagues is only owned in eight percent um he has back-to-back touchdowns uh with kyle allen as his quarterback um so me personally i would rather have logan thomas who's going to have potential season long value instead of richard rogers who's just a one-week uh rental sure if you're looking season long value i'll give you logan thomas but if you're looking at maximizing your output in the next week or two i would definitely go towards richard rogers I like that offense more than the Washington offense. I think he has a higher likelihood of getting into the end zone. Um, All right. And then my deep ad of the week is going to be Denzel Mims receiver for the New York Jets, Jets, Jets rostered in just about 3% of leagues. He went four for 42, four catches for 42 yards on a whopping seven targets. In his rookie debut for a more than 32% target share. Um, caught my eye this weekend. I'm excited to see what he maintains or is not able to maintain with the eventual return of Jamison Crowder. Um, but both him and Braxton Berrios managed a 32% target share. So... Not that it's great targets or they're going to get real close to the end zone, but hey, they could one of these times. But Denzel Mims. Yeah, and to to your point about game, yeah, game script, they're going to be down probably most of the time. So if you got to figure out who's going to be the other one besides my guy, Jamie Crowder. Um, Theoretically, when Jamison is healthy, he's clearly the number one. He's going to have seven catches every game. Um, But if he's out, um, then yeah, you can take a take a deep flyer. Wonderful. That's all I have. Is is there anybody else on your list that we missed? Yeah, a couple guys. So Rodrigo Blankenship, um, another kicker. Um, he had a bye week this week. He was he's kicker number three. I understand your frustration with the kicker, Jason, but they can still win you titles. Um, he's had over eight fantasy points in all six games that he's played in so far this year. Um, owned in 45% of leagues. I believe 30% of people dropped him that he was owned in leagues. So honestly, I think he is worth spending fab on um, if he's available. So just be aware of that uh, if he's available in your league. Randall Cobb is currently wide receiver 34. Randall Cobb is owned in 13.7% of leagues. He's averaging 9.2 points a week. Show show my guy Randall Cobb some love. and then uh, Chase Claypool, um, I just want to just oh, want to advertise God. that you can Crap. probably safely drop him because he sucks. Um, he has had over four targets in one game this past week. He had one catch. He had one target for minus two yards. It made me happy. He's not Maple Tron. He's like Water Tron. Pour water on some pancakes. That's how much he sucked this week. Um, <laughs> And then I I just want to point out that um, so I I was getting hammered for Josh Jacobs last week um, on Twitter. We mentioned it in our um, in our episode. Somebody was like, 
Name me 22 running backs that are going to be better than Josh Jacobs this week. Well, Josh Jacobs finished running back 40, so suck on it. Um, let's see here. I, I don't think I have anything else, honestly. I just kind of wanted to go on a... I feel better now. Thanks. Alex brought the heat. Oh, my. Uh, all I Chase have Claypool. to say as we transition to our social media page, besides, thank you for listening. Please like, please subscribe, please hit the bell if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, thank you guys for any review you've ever, ever left us, especially on Apple. It makes all the difference in getting the word out and getting our faces in front of more beautiful people. Um, thank you so much. So as, as we transition, I would just like to say that Alex owes me 57 seconds for talking about freaking Rodrigo Blankenfart. And uh, with that, thank you guys for listening. We are available on all podcasting platforms and have a good night. I mean, his his name is Rodrigo Blankenship, and that's exactly what he could win you if you go spend a fab dollar or two on him. You'll thank me later. Kickers matter. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.